Are you a little behind in your goals for 2023? Let's talk about it. Hey, real estate besties. It's your real estate bestie, Rosemary Lewis with eXp Realty. And today I'm talking to my friends who may be looking at the calendar and it's March and you're already behind on your goals, but no worries, I am going to tell you exactly what to do about it. But before we get into it, y'all, I just want to remind you that we have a podcast now. Look at that. If you have not done so yet, make sure to hop on over to the Real Estate Bestie podcast so that you can subscribe and get connected to our Real Estate Bestie community there. Now let's talk about 2023 and how to get these goals back on track. So y'all know I have a lot of conversations with the different real estate agents. And what I have heard from a lot of agents is a little bit of anxiety in a couple areas because they're looking at what their year long goals are and feeling a little nervous because the first quarter started off slower than they anticipated it started off. Now, there are lots of factors and I will be, um, I'm here to tell you that I have spoken with agents that normally sell upwards to 20 to $30 million of real estate a year. And this year has started off just a tad bit slower than what they are used to. Now, unless you're under a rock, you know that we have experienced a lot of changes in the market. And yes, some of what we may be experiencing in, in, as it relates to your goals and the deals that you have on the table may be because of some of the things like higher interest rates, still struggling inventory, buyers on the fence, things of that nature. But I am here to tell you, I don't want you to get discouraged but we do definitely want to take assessment of where we are right now and see if we need to change course or what needs to happen in order to get where we are going to go. Now, a great business practice, I just wanna start off by saying this, is to not just track your goals annually or even quarterly. So that is one of the reasons why at the time that I'm shooting this video, you're watching it at the beginning of March because we're not waiting to the end of quarter one to start talking about, okay, what do we need to do to get on track? I'm going to encourage you to have some sort of system and actually put it in comments if you would like me to share a system with you and how you would be most beneficial to track your progress week after week and month after month so that you're not looking up and it's mid-year and we don't know where the time went. Um, so first things first is I'm going to encourage you to start taking a hard look at your numbers right now and to see, okay, am I meeting, am I exceeding, or am I a little bit behind where I wanna be? And if you're behind, we're gonna talk about that right now. The very first thing I want you to do is I want you to first have an honest conversation with yourself and it needs to go a little something like this. Are my daily activities in alignment with the goals that I have set out for myself? Now I'm going to take this away from real estate terms and I'm gonna bring it into something a little different. Let's just say you are training for a 5K run, right? And a 5K is a little bit over three miles. If every single day you're choosing to watch TV for 30 minutes instead of getting outside and getting some fresh air and um, going for a run, starting to pick up your pace, having a brisk walk, are we gonna be surprised if when it's time for the 5K, we are not in position to compete? Probably not, because our daily activities did not line up with the goal that we set for for ourselves. The same thing with your real estate career is what you're doing on a daily basis, do those habits match the person who is going to have that production goal of what you want at the end of the year? And in addition to daily habits, let's talk about daily mindset, daily activities, like is what you're doing on a daily basis truly reflective of what it's gonna take to get to your goal? And if right now it's not there yet, I don't want you to beat yourself up I want you to start to course correct right now, really sit down, pull out your ideal day planner 
And if you don't have that, how to head on over to rosemarylewis.com forward slash ideal day. I have a template for you. Go ahead and pull out that template and really start planning your ideal day. So the very first thing y'all is we're going to see, do our habits match up with what we want the end result to be? The next thing that I want you to do as you are figuring out, okay, how do I really get back in the game? You need to stay top of mind right now. And now more than ever, we need to be reaching out and connecting to our database. So I want you to be on the phone with your past clients, with your friends and family, with your dentist, with your kid's teacher, with the lunch lady, with the crossing guard. I want you to be in front of as many people as you can and, and be not being a secret agent, letting them know like, hey, I am here, I'm ramped up, I'm ready to help. What do you need or who do you know that needs my help? So this is the time to get out of our own way and to really double down on our relationships. Now, here's the thing about relationships for, though, right? We have to give first. So I don't want you to just be calling people to say, hey, who do you know that's looking to buy or sell? But try to figure out what problems are they experiencing and how can you help them solve their problems so that we can put in some deposits into that friendship bank before we look to withdraw from it. But definitely making sure that you really, really, really are doubling down on your relationships and your relationship building activities. Because trust me, in the long run, that is what pays off amazing dividends in this business. Here's the next thing. Going back a little bit to our, um, our ideal day and really our daily activities, how non-negotiable are you with the things that are in your money-making hours? So I really want you to sit down and evaluate whatever you're doing to generate, nurture, prospect, and follow up with your leads. Are you so committed to that time that you are not letting anything that short of a house fire, seriously, anything short of that interfere with that time? Because you know the time that you're putting into those money-making activities are going to be the main driver for your income this year. So definitely take a deep look at your money-making activities and make sure that the time that you have committed to that is non-negotiable. Here's the next thing I'm gonna encourage you to do. I was once at a training not too long ago and this young man, it was a realtor, he said something that was so, um, it was just so spot on and I realized that this is why a lot of people don't hit their goals. Because let's be honest, many of us set a goal that we don't necessarily have to achieve in order for our lives to run. So I'll give you a great example. Let's just say that you set a goal this year to make $200,000 in gross commission income. But for the way you live your life, like last year you made 100,000. So your lifestyle and everything about you is really okay with 100,000. So even though you know you're capable of creating and making 200,000, there is not really a, a, a consequence if you don't hit those goals. So I'm going to encourage you to create a reward and consequence system to encourage you to hit your numbers. So this may be a great example. If I know that making my calls each day is going to be a direct reflection of the business and the conversations that I'm going to have in real estate, maybe the consequence of not making my calls is that I do not get to log onto social media at all of that day. Like that is the consequence. If you don't get your calls done, you don't get to engage on the World Wide Web with anyone. But let's just say the reward is that, okay, when you make your calls, you'll get to log into social media and you get a bubble bath today, okay? So there has to be something that is in, not only encouraging you towards the goal, but what is a neg negative implication if you don't complete the thing that is going to get you there? If you have found yourself a little stuck in 2023 and you're not sure what to do in order to get to your goal, this is the game changer. You gotta keep going, right? You just have to keep doing the things. I keep saying this. I heard this analogy about a microwave and a crock pot so long ago. Many of us want a microwave business. We want a business so we can just go ahead and do a little bit of something. We can throw it in for a minute and it's ready. 
But the reality is that real estate is more like a crock pot, okay? We are going to get the best nour nourishing meals, the best nourishing opportunities by putting something in and letting it slow cook and just being consistent over time. So I want you definitely to take stock of what you're doing, figure out what's working and adjust what's not, but you just have to keep going because the fact of the matter is we are in a market that is taking a little bit more nurturing, right? It's not happen happening as rapidly as it used to. And the reality is that you may stop just short of your overwhelming blessing. So make sure that you keep going and that you don't stop just because things have started off a little slower than you prefer. All right, if you made it to the end of this video and you are not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe. And while you're at it, give your girls a thumbs up and leave a comment. Like which one of these five things are you committed to doing to make sure that you get to your goal? And like I said before, make sure that you check out your real estate bestie, Rosemary Lewis, over on the Real Estate Bestie podcast. We're gonna put a link here in the description box to make sure that you get connected to the Real Estate Bestie community. And I will talk to you next week.